Three, two, one. Oh, it turned a different color. Okay. Hey there, how's it going? Welcome back to a brand new video. Currently concentrating down some hydrogen peroxide. YouTube decided to remove my other video, which I am currently in the process of trying to get back now. Today we're going to be testing some of this stuff, hydrogen peroxide, and a few catalysts. See, this is actually going to be one of the first few videos of my rocket series. I'll leave a link up there. Make sure to check that out because it's very important that you do. Anyway, I recently got my shipment, manganese dioxide from Loudwolf, a great chemical supplier if you, if you get your chemicals from them. That is one catalyst I want to try today. Another catalyst I want to try is charcoal. Apparently charcoal does some decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, so that's another one I want to test. And I also want to test potassium iodide. I have very little of it left, but I have some left, so we're going to try that as well. Okay, a few things. So, number one, the video that YouTube took down, I managed to get it back. So, my hydrogen peroxide concentration video is still up, and you can go watch it uh, right there if you'd like. So, that's good. Hopefully, YouTube won't be doing that again, although it probably won't be the last time. Second thing. I got my next beaker shipment in today, and so as you can see, uh, I got it's from Flynn Scientific. I also made a video about that, which um, <clears throat> if it's uploaded right now, you can go watch. If not, it'll be uploaded soon. So here we go. Over here, I have my beaker with my <clears throat> peroxide. I've got 333 milliliters of 3% of hydrogen peroxide in there. Today, I want to test some different catalysts as part of my rocket project. All right, we are back, and I have reduced the volume. I had about 333 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide in there, which means that if we wanted to get it at uh, 30%, we would have to reduce the volume by a factor of 10 because we had 3% hydrogen peroxide to start with. As you'll notice, I am wearing safety equipment because this stuff will bleach your skin, which I found out the hard way. So be careful with it. I'm stressing safety way more now because YouTube decided to take down my other hydrogen peroxide video, uh, which is probably due to whatever. Anyway, back to this. So I'm now going to take the density before we begin our tests. I'll zoom in so you can see what the heck's going on. 26.6 grams. There is our density. And according to this handy dandy online calculator, shout out to, uh, let's see, I don't want to get the name wrong because uh, this is a very handy calculator. I'll leave a link in the description. But this is actually given to me, let's see, Water Rockets Rule. So thank you very much, Water Rockets Rule. I am very happy that you shared that with me. Awesome. But there you go, uh, our, our content is about 35% according to that calculator, which is probably off by like 3% just because I know that there's a limit you can get with that. So plus or minus, plus or minus like 5% probably. So that'll be fine. So we, we're, we're working with roughly 30% hydrogen peroxide, probably a little bit more, but that's all we needed. Now we can move on to the catalyzing process okay I'm going to weigh the equal amounts of the three different catalysts really today later I might use different catalysts but today I just want to go with a couple so I will make sure to reduce the amount of variables we have and the only variable I like to introduce is the amount of catalyst that's all I'd like to do a gram will work I'd say probably not the most accurate thing ever but It'll get us close. Okay, we are now outside, and here is our three catalysts. Potassium iodide, manganese dioxide, and charcoal. You might be wondering why I'm using charcoal in the first place, because it, it's kind of a, an obscure catalyst here. I can't remember exactly what the title was, but when you mix 90% hydrogen peroxide, it decomposed from the charcoal. So, I thought it'd be interesting to see if I could do it with 30%. Uh, if it works, as good as manganese dioxide, I'll probably use that because it's cheaper, but it takes up more volume because it has a lower density. So I'm going to measure out 5 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide, 30%. So here we go, straight in, 3, 
two, one. I don't expect much to happen, but, oh wait, wait, hold on. Now I'm doing this outside for obvious reasons. I don't know if you can see that. It is bubbling, so it might be working. I think I used too much charcoal though, is the only problem. I haven't seen a chemical equation for this. There it is. Tell you what, I'm gonna... Ooh, wait, wait. Got some vapor coming off. Might be starting. Nice. In the video, it did take a while for it to start. Nice. That's pretty good. That's pretty good decomposition. That's pretty good. You might be wondering why I'm not using volume to measure them, and I'm using um, mass instead. Oh, the reason is the regulations and laws regarding rockets, one of the rules has to do with the mass of the propellant, and so I'd rather measure it by mass than volume, so. But I think that might be pretty much it. There it is on the inside. I don't know if you can tell. I wonder how hot it is. Okay, it's decently hot. It's not hot down here. It's only hot up here. We're the, probably hotter in the middle where the peroxide got to it. Probably not much peroxide probably got down to the bottom. It probably mostly stayed at the top. I'll do another test with this. I'll make another video on it where I use less charcoal. See how that works. Okay, that's pretty good. Next up is the manganese dioxide. All right, five more milliliters into the manganese dioxide we go. Let's see how this one does. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, yeah, that's way better. Okay, I'm putting this on to the get around. It's gonna spill over. Oh, maybe not. That's way more vigorous. There it goes. That's pretty good. I'd say that's better than the charcoal, probably. But maybe that's just because Peroxide wasn't able to mix with as much charcoal because of the density. I mean, obviously, carbon's a much smaller atom than the molecule of manganese dioxide, so. Oh yeah, look at that. That's got rocket potential, all right. Oh yeah. Look at that go. Awesome. Subscribe for more. <laughs> nice. I want to feel how hot it is, but obviously I don't want to touch it right now. Looked like it was about to spill over, but it didn't. Wow, look at that. I'm going to move this test tube over. Just because I think maybe a little bit of peroxide went in there. Oops. Oh well. I mean, this stuff, I'm obviously going to use this stuff. Like, come on. I mean, to be fair, the charcoal did work, though. I was kind of surprised when I first saw that, to be honest. Look, it's still going. Holy crap. I wonder how much pressure I could build up. That's alright. Nice. All right, well, that's pretty good. The last one I want to use is the potassium iodide. Five more milliliters. Milliliters of in and three, two, one. Oh, it turned a different color. Okay. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my days. That was way faster than I thought it was going to be. Holy crap. <laughs> oh no. Hold on. Oh my days. I was not expecting that to go off like that. Well, we obviously, we obviously found the most powerful one out of the three. The uh, potassium iodide. Holy crap, that was strong. Oh my goodness gracious. 
Imagine what these three would be like with 90% peroxide. I want to try that later. Well, there you go. Now I'm going to have to clean up my test tube rack. See, this is one reason why I'm using hydrogen peroxide versus nitric acid and gasoline. Because, I mean, look at that. I mean, imagine if that was a nitric acid. Uh, there was nitric acid in that tube. My goodness. That's pretty awesome, though. So, I just want to feel these. Holy crap. I was not expecting that. <laughs> I want to put a little bit more in there. Just to see what would happen. Grab a little bit more of that. Let's see if anything else happens when I put this in. Again, again, again. Holy crap. Okay. Holy. Okay. I'm backing up. My gosh. Still. Look at that. That's insane. Imagine if I was able to use that as my... Holy crap. Okay. How about the manganese dioxide? Nothing. So that means we used it all up. Charcoal? I'm curious to charcoal again. Let's just do that one more time. Running out of peroxide here, though. We have to make another batch. Alright. Anything? A little bit. A little bit of something. Oh, <laughs> it wants more. It wants more. You know what? Screw it. If it wants more, we'll give it more. All right. Let's see. The camera just took a crap. Okay, here we go. Last test. I'm dumping the rest of this peroxide into the potassium iodide test tube. Here we go. Three, two, one. There it goes. Basically, elephant's toothpaste. Right? Holy crap. Look at all that vapor coming off. That was awesome. Awesome stuff. Well, there you have it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more. I'll see you in the next one. Look at the mess it made. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? What is that? That's my potassium iodide and... Oh, uh, it smells.